If there's one aspect of geometry you should pay special attention to, that should be triangles. Triangles have a lot of rules and they're one of the favorite topics tested on your exam. You should be aware of four basic categories of triangles. 90 degree angles in a triangle create what's known as a right triangle. If two sides and two angles of the triangle are the same, that's known as an isosceles triangle. An equilateral triangle has all three sides and all three angles the same. In the last triangle, that's where none of the sides and none of the angles have the same measure. That's known as a scaling triangle. Some of the rules we talk about will apply to all of the triangle categories. Other rules will only apply to special categories. One of the most important rules with geometry on an exam is never trust the picture. Just because a triangle looks like a right triangle or looks like an equilateral triangle doesn't mean it is. You can only assume a right triangle is a special triangle if they either tell you in the question or if they put special markings on a triangle. In this case, these special markings, these hash marks, those tell you that the two sides are of equal length. The little arcs in the triangle angles, those tell you the angles are equal. And the square box in one of the angles, that's the sign for the angle being 90 degrees or a right angle. So the top left triangle, that is an isosceles triangle. The one on the right is a right triangle. And the one on the bottom, that is a combination of the two or an isosceles right triangle. The first rule of triangles is that all the angles add up to 180 degrees. So if we label this missing angle as x, we could write the equation that x plus 85 plus 50, that equals 180 degrees. Or x plus 135 equals 180. Subtract 135 from both sides and I get x is equal to 45. You should also be aware of the exterior angle theorem. The exterior angle theorem is not so much a rule as it is a shortcut because it really comes from combining two rules that are heavily tested on your exam. If I label the unknown angles in this triangle as A and B, I can write two equations. The first thing I know is that every triangle angles add up to 180 degrees. So I could write the equation that 50 plus A plus B equals 180 degrees. The next thing I notice is that when I look at angles B and the 115 degree angle, that makes a straight line. And I know that every straight line also equals 180 degrees. So I could write the equation that B plus 115 is equal to 180. Since both of my equations equal 180 degrees, I can actually set my two equations equal to each other. So I could write that 50 plus A plus B is equal to B plus 115. I can subtract B from both sides and I'm left with 50 plus A is equal to 115. And that right there is the exterior angle theorem. The outside angle on any triangle will be equal to the sum of the two opposing interior angles. So what this theorem really does, it saves me about two or three steps or about a minute on my exam. You should also be aware of a concept known as similar triangles. Similar triangles occur when two triangles are different sizes but they have the exact same shape. In other words, the length of the sides might be different but the angle measures are the same. In this triangle here, we've signified the measure of D with this single arc line. That same arc line exists in angle A. That's the question's way of signifying the two angles A and D are the same. Likewise, we can see that angle B with two lines is the same angle as angle E with two lines. And angle C with three lines is equal to angle F. The rule of similar triangle states that any two corresponding sides maintain the same ratio. 
In other words, the ratio of the side that is 12 to the side that is 6 will be the same ratio as the side that is x to the side that is 10. To make sure I don't get my ratios in the wrong order, I like to start off my ratio with b over l, to me which stands for the big triangle over the little triangle. So in this case, the big over the little is equal to my side that is 12 over my side that is 6. And that's going to be equal to the big side that is blue, which is x, over my little blue side, which is 10. From there, I can cross multiply and I get 6x is equal to 120, or x is equal to 20. If I asked you to identify the longest side in this triangle, you probably wouldn't have too much trouble. You could visually just tell that's going to be the side from m to n. You may also notice that opposite the longest side is also the largest angle. And that's a rule to be aware of. The largest angle opens up to the largest side. And the smallest angle opens up to the smallest side. You're most likely to see this rule tested on a triangle that is either intentionally misdrawn or the angles visually look so close to the same that you can't tell which side is the longest side. But the rule still applies. The largest angle opens up to the largest side. So in this case, our largest angle is 63 degrees. That means that F to E is our largest side. And this 55 degrees, that's our smallest angle, so our smallest ang so our smallest side is G to E. The side sum theorem states that any two sides of any triangle, when added together, must be larger than the third side. So in this triangle, A plus B must be larger than C, and A plus C must be larger than B, and B plus C must be larger than a. So a question may give you two sets of numbers and ask you which set could be the sides of a triangle. And you can test those numbers with the side sum theorem. So on the left, we could write 7 plus 5, that must be greater than 4, and that's true. And 5 plus 4, that has to be greater than 7, and that's true as well. And 7 plus 4 must be greater than 5. All three statements are true, so those could be the sides of a triangle. When we test the numbers on the right, however, we see a problem. If we add 3 plus 6, yes, that's bigger than 2. But if I add 3 plus 2, that is not bigger than 6. So 3, 6, and 2 could not be the sides of a triangle. The reason 3, 6, and 2 could not make a triangle is best illustrated if I try and draw a triangle with those sides. And I'm going to do my best to draw this triangle to scale. I'll start off with the bottom side of 6. My next side is going to be 3, so I'll try and draw that exactly half the length of the red side. So 3 would look something kind of like that. My last side is only 2, so it's going to be smaller than my blue side. And if I draw it like that, you can see there's nothing I could do to make the blue line and red line touch unless I break or bend the red line. So that's why 3, 6, and 2 could not make a triangle. The last rule deals with finding the area of a triangle. And the equation you use is 1 half times a base times your height. Any side can be your base, but your height has to hit your base at 90 degrees, and it has to stretch from the base to the point farthest away from your base. So in this case, our base was 2. We have to draw a line that hits the base at 90 degrees, and then it stretches up to the farthest point on the triangle. I could have also drawn my height with this blue line, and then my base would have been this green line, that would work too. It's just a matter of using whatever information they give you. We'll deal more with how to find your height in the video called Right Triangles and Special Right Triangles.